Welcome you back to the Davy Whitney Arena here on the beautiful campus of Alcorn State University. A little chill in the air here, a little taste of a little taste of winter, but uh, we'll warm back up here as we make the turn. Just a handful of games left in SWAC basketball. A couple of games in Texas, two games here at home against Mississippi Valley and UAPB. As we talked about at the top, a lot to play for. The Braves still in the hunt for possibly the one seed. Got to hope for Grambling to stumble. They've got the Florida teams coming in and then they go to Alabama on the back end of it. Southern University also vying for it and the Braves and Texas Southern. TSU still in the hunt the regular season and with Mississippi Valley winning their first game, each game has its own dynamic. But first things first, let's talk about Jackson State. You can tweet a question. I'm on Twitter, Tall Man Radio on X and uh, we'll be talking about some Braves basketball here with head coach Landon Bussey here to my left as we make the turn. Coach, you were telling your team only a handful of practices left. The regular season is about to come to an end, and a lot is at stake, and your team was able to get it done on Saturday. Congratulations with the big win over Jackson State to keep the winning streak going. Absolutely. Um, opportunity to get a big win, continue with the streak. So now we just got to continue to practice hard and keep the momentum going into the SWAC tournament. Is this kind of what you thought in you know, terms of this team, where we are right now, you know, rounding out into shape, down the stretch a little bit? Talk a little bit about that, Coach, in terms of just where we are, kind of a slow start, lost some games here, but started to pick up some momentum. Um, yeah, we, we started kind of slow. We started slow. Um, but, you know, I think we did a good job of putting ourselves back in a good situation to be successful. Um, you know, we started out one and three. Um, right now, we are what nine and five, I believe. Um, so we, we put ourselves in the hunt. Put ourselves in the hunt. Now we got to go in Texas and take care of business. Yeah, and you look at where we are right now. We're nine and five. Uh, Southern ten and four. Grambling eleven and three. And so you look at Texas Southern right now. They're ten and five. They have three games left. They have Prairie View, and then of course um, they've got us and Jackson State coming up. And Bethune-Cookman with nine wins. Jackson State with eight wins. You know, this this conference race is stacked. I mean, Grambling has gotten hot at the right time. Two big wins over Southern. Two come from behind wins over Southern University. So there's a lot to play for from one to eight. Prairie View, maybe with their last stance in, in terms of making the tournament, something that you don't talk about with a Byron Smith team making the tournament. Usually they're playing from the top, and now they're fighting to get into the top eight, and they, and they lost the other night to Mississippi Valley. So a lot to play for in each game here the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. It, it, it's definitely a lot to play for. It's definitely a lot to play for. Um, you know, um, you know, you could right now, for us, we're trying to, you know, get the highest seed as possible. We can't easily drop down, um, but we, we got to maintain focus. We, we can't, you know, fall apart these last four games. we got to continue to to what got us to this part, and which was, you know, first buying into the defensive end and the offensive end doing a better job of sharing the ball. Um, I think we had 19 assists the other day. I'm not sure what game was that. We, I think it might have been the Jackson State game. Mm -hmm. But we did a great job of just sharing the ball and, you know, guys just, you know, not letting the ball stick to their hands and not being selfish. Yeah, 19 assists, a high-scoring game, an overtime game, a very energized game. So let's let's take a look at it, Coach this matchup, and even though a lot of people during the course of the week was talking about the game in Baton Rouge, Southern and Grambling for first place, the two hottest teams were right here. Uh, we won four in a row, and Jackson's won four in a row. They scored 88 on us in the, in the first game. What was the adjustments that we had to make, that we had to correct? You said you looked at that JSU film back on January 6th, and Titley, what were some of the things we had to clean up as Jackson State came here? Um. Transition defense and limited team to one shot. I think that when we played them in the first meeting, I think that they dictate the game. You know, they control the tempo of the game. And our focus was we want to control the game. We want to get up and pressure them and try to wear them down. And hopefully by the end of the game, which happened, they'll wear down with our um, depth. You know, they don't play too many guys right now. So we want to use our depth and get up pressure them and by wearing them down. Yeah, we got off to a fast start, as, as you can see. Um, coach, when you when you look at the starts, coach that that we have had in in games this season, talk a little bit about that aspect of it—the fact that we're able to start fast, and you want to continue to play fast for 40 minutes. But there have been a number of games, coach, uh, that we have been able to start fast. Um, 
you know, we, we and that's what I'm t- preaching to my team right now, especially against um, moving forward against a Prairie View team who's struggling, a Prairie View team who's struggling. Um, you know, we don't want the same thing to happen as far as when we play FAMU, to where as though we get up and then we let them back in the game the last three, four minutes of the half with a um, miss dunk, miss free throws, half court heave. Uh, we want to we want to find a way to put our foot on the team neck and, and, and put them away. And so hopefully we can come out of here in Prairie View the first eight minutes of the game and you know see if they see if they'll lay down, see if they'll lay down. But it's going to start with us. Um, practice, practice hard every day. Practice, practice, practice. We got about seven, eight more practices until we go into the swag tournament. Um, and every single practice right now counts. Every single practice matters. So that's our focus right now was building up good practices that can that can help us out um, in Birmingham. Well, let's talk about Jackson State here, Coach. I mean, the practices leading up to Jackson State, again, the two hottest teams were here on Saturday. So you look at Jackson State, you look at uh, Cornelius, Ken Evans, top scorer, or O'Neal, another top scorer, top ten scorer, Treyon Johnson, and Hunt. Uh, talk about that lineup and just some of the challenges that we had in dealing with a JSU team that just kept fighting and hit a bucket in the final seconds to send it in overtime. Yeah, um, Coach Williams got that team playing hard. They got them playing hard. They got them fighting. They got them competing on both sides of the ball. Um, so they, they're not going to give up. They're going to compete. They're going to fight. They're going to compete. They're going to fight. But, you know, it's our job for us. You know, I think right now we're the most complete team. Um, so I think no matter what team throw at us, who's playing, um, if we do what we're supposed to do, we'll be in great shape. Now, we went up early, and then they made their run early in the second half. Um, I think we stopped doing a good job of just locating their shooters. We stopped doing a good job of uh, keeping Evans out the paint, making tough shots for him. And then we just started to just fall apart. Um, but then it was a stretch where as though I think it was probably about eight minutes left in the, in, the, in the game, and our defense really clicked in. You know, DK came up defensively. Mike came up. And I think them guys started to see that Jackson State started to get a little tired. And the moment we started to see them get a little tired, we st- we wanted the energy to go up louder. Yeah, we had a big lead in the first half. We led 36-34 at the break. And then Jackson went on a – they led by six. And just like you talked about with that drought, they, they went a five-minute drought from about the seven-minute mark to about the three-minute, two-minute and change mark. What impressed you about that particular drought, how we were able to lock them down? What turned that thing around in terms we were able to shut them down and then – get over the hump to grab the lead there? Well, I think it was just, you know, us doing a better job of um, being there on the catch. You know, we gave too many open looks to Cody Young. We gave too many open looks to Ken Evans and um, the other kid who who, who uh, started for them. We just gave them way too many looks. So we, we had to, you know, start out defense a little further out. Um, you know, early on we pressured them, and I think they didn't handle the pressure well. But then the second half, they got kind of settled in. And they started making the right play. And I think that kind of hurt us when the ball got reversed so quick. You know, when teams reverse the ball so quick, it's really hard for us to um, dominate us on the defense, dominate teams on the defensive end. Just due to the ball is moving so quick, and we got a hard time if we want to trap, if we want to get deflection, if we want to, you know, uh, switch ball screens, or whatever the case may be. When teams is moving the ball that fast, we have to change up our defense. So we just try to make a little adjustment to our defense on the defensive end, um, and hopefully we was able to get more stops. Yeah, we were able to get the stops. We were able to slow them down, shut them down. I think they lived quite a bit from beyond the arc during that that drought. Try to, you know, and I think Colty Young got going, Ken Evans got going. But then down the stretch, Coach, in the final seconds, Jackson State hit a shot to send it in overtime. Talk about the sequence in the last few seconds as they tied it up late. Yeah, I mean, you know, that three that they, you know, Coach William drew up, it was, it was, a, it was a great play. Um, it was a great play. And, you know, I was just having flashbacks because, you know, C- Cody Young made that three, you know, a few years uh, last year. And the ball went in, but that ball went in, went out, and then crazy thought about it. Byron had the same opportunity going yeah. up the right sideline to uh, win the game again. It was just like deja vu all over again. So it was, it was kind of, it's kind of frightening. It was kind of frightening because I thought that ball was going in. Yeah, and just talk about trying to defend the big. I mean, Jackson State got that tip in. I mean, got a wide body in there with with that tip. Talk about the challenge and trying to to slow him down. We saw another big and for Florida A and M, and then Jackson brought in a, another wide body. Yeah, um, you know, big body. Um, he does a great job of sealing inside the paint. He does a great job of setting screens and getting offensive rebounds and like that. So, 
what we wanted to do is, um, of course, we're, we're much smaller than a lot of teams. But what, so what we try to do, we try to full front. We try to full front, make teams throw it over the top of our defense and help that guy to be there. Um, but you know, I think we did a good job of locking in on him. I just don't think we did a good job on this, some of the other players. Yeah, Trayon Johnson's the one that had that had the tip-in bucket. So what was the speech, Coach, going into overtime? I mean, it was a back-and-forth game, a lot of emotion, a lot of testosterone. It's a rival game. You know that was going to be the case, and there was a lot at stake. Both teams, the hottest, two of the hottest teams in the league. So now we have an overtime game, 65 all. What was the speech to your team in the huddle as we put five minutes on the clock? They're, they're done. You, you you know, we looked in their eyes, and they was they was tired and exhausted, you know. And I got on my team because, you know, you know, it was one stretch in the game where, you know, Jack State had their hands on their knees. And then my players, they go put their hands on their knees. Y'all put your hands on their knees. Y'all see them. Y'all not tired. <laughs> y'all not tired. Y'all, y'all shouldn't be tired right now. But once we knew – that um, Cody Young did not make that shot in that corner. And, of course, that tip in, you know, get, get forced into overtime. But we knew going to overtime that they were done. Because, you know, you know, I think that they were just a little tired. And the look in their eyes, and looked at, I saw a look in their eyes, saw a look in their eyes. You know, it looked like that we were ready for more. Like we wanted more. Um, and they looked like that they wished they, that, that he would have made that shot. Yeah, typically when you have a situation like that in those type of games, the team that gets the final bucket, the tip in, the send in overtime, whichever team that is, whether the home team or the visiting team, usually old Mo, old momentum, you know, rides with that team and the team that gave up that last second heave or whatever it is or tip in uh, to tie it up, usually they're like, uh-oh. But this team came out and scored 22 points, Coach, in five minutes, outscored them 22-8. to eight. Now we had 36 first-half points, 29 in the second half. We had 22 points. In a five-minute overtime period, what what made the offense so efficient in that overtime set? J.K. I mean, J.K. was the best player on the court. I mean, you just gave the ball to him and get out the way. Just get the ball to J.K. and just get out the way. I mean, he just put his team on the back. I remember he had a jump shot right there. I remember and one. I remember uh, um, office rebound. Um, just you know, that's what made it simple. You know, it makes it makes my life very easy when you got really good basketball players. So, um, to answer your question, you know, J.K. Was, was the best player on the court. And we outscored him 22 to 8, and we won going away. Big win, 87 to 73. And looking at the final numbers, Kendall, 19 points and eight rebounds. He had three players in double figures. Byron Joshua had 21. I mean, you, you think about what he did in the game, and you're like, man, Byron Joshua had 21. He had 21 and five, coach. Yeah, um, 25 what? Five rebounds. How many assists? He had two assists. So that 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 that's where um, I want to continue to push him to, you know, maintain at least seven assists, seven to eight assists a game, because that's what you know pros and scouts that's what they're gonna look at. How can he distribute the ball? So the twenty one points is is a luxury to have, but you know it would be good to get twenty one points, eight rebounds, and seven seven assists. You know he he can he's a good rebounding guard. Now he just got to continue to just um, making sure that his, he putting his teammates in the best way to be best position to be successful. Um, but scoring for him comes easy. Um, and he's been doing a good job the last few days of making sure his team get, his teammate gets the ball. You talk about being a leader and being vocal. Is it me or am I seeing a little bit more vocal um, Byron Joshua here of late? Yeah, I think that um, it's, it's, it's that time of year to where it's though. Um, he see how good we can be. I think everybody's starting to see. I mean, our last five games that we won, all of them been double figures. All of them been double figures. You know, all of them been, you know, double figure wins. So everybody's starting to see as far as in the team, which my coaching staff and I already knew how good we can be. Um, and when you see ro- results after all the hard work you've been putting in, it expires you. It motivates you to give more. So I think that, you know, he's starting to see the team. The team is starting to see that, you know, every, we, we didn't play everybody so far. We didn't play everybody so far. Um, it's not one team that you look on that stands that I feel as though that has a more complete team than us um, and that we can't beat. You know, last year I think that, you know, there they was, you know, it was some really good basketball clubs. I think that was a little more ahead of us last year. Um, but you know, right now, if you just you know look at, I don't, I, I, it's nobody on that on that on that stand is 
to where it's though that you know we going into March, we going into the, the swag tournament to say, oh well, we we can't, you know, it's gonna be we can beat anybody. It's just it's everything is about us. Are we going to do what we supposed to do on, off the court? Are we going to come in and practice hard every day? Am I going to have to get on you and motivate you? Then once you get on the court, are you going to um, buy into the defensive end? Are you going to know the scouting report and, and take team strengths away? Are you going to share the ball and not try to be the hero? So that's the biggest thing is, is it's us. Everything is based on us. Do, do you feel like, and you know, I keep asking this throughout the course of the year, not necessarily in non-conference because it's it's really tough in non-conference, when we had some games there, the Arkansas State game, the UAB game, and, and you, you, you kind of balance the schedule out. I mean, you don't have the, the powerhouses, the Kentuckys. I was watching that game last night, Kentucky, Mississippi State, you know, top teams in the country. You had some really solid, a really solid quad two, quad one games in which you've got to come out and play. You know, the, um, the Drakes of the world and the George Washingtons of the world, the UABs of the world, the Arkansas States of the world. Solid, 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 solid schedule. But – you, I was wondering when the light bulb was starting to go off. You know, in conference, it's a whole nother deal. I mean, you would like to have more non-conference wins. Last year we had, you know, Wichita State and Stephen F. Austin. This year wasn't quite the same. But I was wondering when did the light, when was the light bulb starting to go off? You know, it was a little flicker of light. Um, I thought maybe the Prairie View game here, you know, we went to Florida after that and all that. But now it seems like you're you're feeling like now the team is starting to get it the buy-in is solid as we get down the stretch and into March. Well, I think our best game so far this year um, is the Bethune game here. Um, th that that was our most complete game. You know, it was the stretches, you know, here at the Prairie View game I, I wasn't proud about. Um, I felt as though we got careless, we got relaxed, and we got nonchalant. And we got selfish, um, just like the Jackson State game, you know, here. You know, I wasn't happy how we started the game. Too many turnovers, too many blowing assignments of defensive end. And this, this is my issue I have with my team right now is we are letting guys get to their strengths. And then we see it and we say, oh, yeah, my bad. I see it. I see. Okay. Now, when are we going to make the corners and, and learn from film, learn from our mistakes? You know, we continue to let guys get to their strengths. And the only thing you got to do is take their strength away and make them use their weakness. And then we go from there. But, you know, we're too careless. At times, we're just too careless with the basketball. At times, we're very selfish. And at times, we just blow defensive assignments. And and once we clean up those areas, that's when you'll see um, our best basketball. Um, so we're getting better. Just got to continue to push these guys and push these guys and push these guys and push these guys. And, push these guys and um, you know, don't let these guys get comfortable. Don't let them get too big headed and understand that, you know, nothing has been accomplished. You know, you know, for us, it's, it's a championship or bust. You know, this whole year, everything, you know, we've been working on since last March can go to waste. Um, if we don't, if we don't secure a championship, it's no oh well you made it here, you finished strong, and you made it to the semifinals. No, I don't believe in that. Um, for us, it's championship or bust. So swag tournament championship. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we you know we told my team you know when we lost at the Grambling game, um, it's it's a good chance that we won't win a regular season championship. It's a great chance, and but that's okay. We are we already accomplished. We already checked that off. We got we got to find a way to, to to get to that big prize, and for guys like you know DK and Byron and Mike and you know them guys who've been here with me since I started, you know you guys already uh, saw what it takes to win a regular season championship. You know you saw what it takes to get to the NIT. You know now it's 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 about getting to that March Madness, and and if you aren't able to get there, um, it's a bust. It's, it's a bust, and all the hard work that we put in over the summer, all the hard work we put in throughout the, you know, spring and non-conference, things like that, you know, it's, it's a waste. You know, it's a waste. Braves get a big win over Jackson State, 87-73. to 73. Coach, a really good effort. I was impressed with uh, uh, Mike Peugeot, nine points and nine rebounds. His family was here. They brought a bus from New Orleans, took pictures. Um, I, I saw his folks a few weeks ago, and they said, we're coming. The Jackson State game, we're bringing a group of folks from New Orleans, they were here in mass. They were here in full force, and he had an impact on the game. Yeah, um, his, his energy 
and his toughness always, you know, can bring an impact on the game. You know, his biggest thing is um, he got to stay mentally engaged. He got to, he got to, and I talk to him about it all the time, you know, Mike, you got to, you got to grow up, got to mature. You're not a freshman, you're not a sophomore, you got to grow up and mature and, and just, you know, he can't let side things distract him from the game. He got to make sure that he keep his emotions in check, you know. Um, he's a very emotional kid, but he got to make sure as the older he gets, he got to learn how to manage his emotion. And he's doing an unbelievable job, um, you, you know, when you're recruiting and, you know, you know, a lot of these guys who's playing, logging a lot of minutes for, for me right now are guys who um, who I help develop, DK, Byron, and Mike. Um, and when you come in practice every day and you don't sit out of practice and you bust your butt every day in practice, you go hard and you do what you're supposed to do off the court, it, it's no way you cannot be successful in my program. I mean, I, I don't know how hard it is to just – go and practice and go in games and just focus on defending the rebound. And when you do that, you'll find a way to be, stay on the court. But when some guys get on the court and first thing they do, touch the ball and shoot it, okay, it's time for you to come out because your, your focus is on the wrong thing. Yeah. Braves get a big win and obviously a great crowd here, Coach, great energy. The band was here. And, you know, we all know what happened in overtime and the ejection and all that, and that, that's being talked about. But, you know, the one thing about it, as a coach, you defend your team. You had a technical foul of – several games ago in defending your team. Mo Williams, obviously, you know, we know what happened. But it's just how coaches battle for their teams. It was a hard-fought game. I mean, it could have gone either way, went in overtime. Just one of those things as a coach, how coaches, and you're a coach, obviously, you, you fight for your team and you battle for your team. Yeah, I mean, it's an intense game. It's a competitive game, you know. Um, and the only thing he, you know, Coach Williams doing is fighting for his team. And, and, and that's how you get – you know, your team support. Like, you know, you want them guys to have your back and you want to have their back. So um, when you feel as though that um, it was an error in the call that was made for the rest, sometimes, you you know, you lose your cool. Everybody does it. I mean, it's, it goes on. Life goes on. Everybody at some point in time let their emotion get the best out of them. And the only thing you're doing in that moment is, is, is fighting for your team. You're fighting for your team and you're fighting for your program. Um, and that's just is what it is. It's, it's every coach, every head coach right now who have been coaching at the Division One level um, probably has been thrown out of the game more than once. So it's nothing that to me is is, is abnormal. It's, it's normal. I mean, I didn't get thrown out Texas A and M. I didn't get thrown out Maryland. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's sometimes you let your emotion get the best of you, and you know when you're passionate and when you want to win, that's what happens. It happens. You were that Texas A&M ejection. That was the calmest ejection I've seen. You were, you were pretty calm. Yeah, and, but you, yeah, it was, it was, I was calm because I was on national TV. But <laughs> the words I was using, we that that's not that's not worthy of national TV. <laughs> yeah, and so it made it look like. So I wanted to make the ref. I wanted to make the ref look like, man, why why are they throwing him out? He calm. <laughs> but it was the stuff what I was saying <laughs> yeah. to where as though they got under his skin, <laughs> okay. and I knew it would. <laughs> Raised with a big win over uh, over Jackson State. Couple of uh, bullet points. Jalen Hawkins, coach, is kind of a, a little old news. A thousand career points, coach. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, got a lot of guys who about to get a get a, hitting a thousand. I think Byron about to hit a thousand. J.K. about to get, hit a thousand. That just mean that's like LeBron James said. You know, when when he hitting all these rebounding awards, <laughs> assists. Points and most turnovers. That means you just getting old. <laughs> that means you just getting old. So, but no, it, 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 it's it's a luxury to have guys like Jalen Hawkins and Jeremiah who can score the ball at a very high level, who can um, you know make your job easy. You know when Jalen Hawkins is rolling, um, you know he he's a very key piece because um, I think right now um, sometimes. His inconsistency comes with um, depending on my emotions and how I am. And, you know, I tell these guys all the time, if, if you're going to let how I coach affect you, then you won't be successful here. But if you can just take it and get out there and, and then and ignore it, you'll be fine. Yeah. But if you – and so the biggest thing with Jalen Hawkins is, that, you know, we got – like I told him in practice today, he passing up shots and said, you know, do you think I got – what do you think I got you on the court for? You know, you're, you know, you're not my best defender, but I got you on the court so we can score. Like, shoot the ball. Like, shoot the ball. And so that's the biggest thing with him. He got to continue to, you know, trust 
you know, his ability that he's he's one of the better scorers in the league, which he is. And he got to do be a, be more aggressive on the offensive end. He, you know, once he's more aggressive, he's holding follow through. And if we could get hot again like how he did against Prairie, if he could get hot like how he did against FAMU at FAMU, I mean, it makes it makes J.K. job easier. It open open up driving lanes for Byron. Um, guys can't help that much off of, you know, DK. So it just makes everything a lot easier. Well, hopefully that easy trend will continue, Coach, as we head to Texas, our last regular season road trip of the year. We open up at Prairie View at 5 o'clock. So, Coach, let's talk about this Prairie View team. Again, we talked about it at the top. We're used to seeing Prairie View at the top or near the top, you know, pushing for the top. You know, the guy that, that you've worked for for five, six years and, and Coach Smith. But right now, Prairie View is in a battle just to make the top eight. And this is probably their last stance, their last chance to get there. They got three games left. They got Alcorn, they got Jackson State and Texas Southern. This team lost to Valley the other day. So what, what can we expect to the second go around in which we almost had 90 points here in this here when we played uh, Prairie View? I mean, we can, we can expect Prairie View to come out here and play hard. That's what you can expect. They'll come out here and play hard. They'll come out here and compete. Um, you know, right now, Prairie View is at a position to where though they need to win out to get into the SWAC tournament. And they, they're they a tough team. They're going to compete. Um, Coach Smith is, doing, is going to do a good job of, you know, trying to figure it out how they can get into the SWAC tournament with these last three games. But it's our job for, you know, for us to keep maintaining our focus. But, you know, you can't take your foot off the gas now. Uh, you put yourself in a position where you win five games in a row, and now you're going up against a Prairie View team who's been struggling a little bit. So now you can give these guys hope, or you go ahead and put them away. You know, the choice is yours. And then Texas Southern, we, we know what that's about. You even talked at practice today about going up against the physicality of the bigs of Texas Southern, and that team just continues to be in our way come March. Absolutely. they just in our way come March, so. We got to take care of business Saturday and Monday. Um, you know, I tell my team all the time, you know, we're, we're not the team who's going to get swept. You know, we didn't want to get swept by um, Texas, uh, Jackson State. All right, now we can take care of business Saturday. You go to take down to take care of business Saturday, you got Monday. Let's focus on not getting swept. You know, we you know we let we let Texas Southern off the hook here. We was up 10 points in the second half with probably about 10 minutes to go. And then we just we completely fell apart. We completely fell apart. So a um, lot has changed since, you know, they've seen us. And I'm pretty sure a lot has changed on there, and they got a lot better. So, but, you know, I think that right now we have the best basketball team. Braves will try to continue their winning streak. We got to deal with P.J. Henry and a very pesky and desperate Prairie View team, as Landon Bussey mentioned, as the Braves will take on PVU Saturday at 5 o'clock at the Baby Dome. Coach, we appreciate it, and I will talk to you down in Texas. All right, thank you. We'll take a break here. Nate Kilbert coming up after this timeout here on the Braves Sports Network.